Hi, good afternoon. Uh, today's episode, the new episode, I'm going to talk about uh, taking care of the when you purchase bare rooted catalia. Uh, uh, bare rooted catalia mean they are bare rooted, like this one here. Uh, uh, in fact, Catalia is one of the earliest. Uh, that's how Catalia was introduced to the New War uh, by the Royal Horticultural Society. They would send the collect uh, a lot of collector to South America, and they would ship the, the Catalia initially as a packing material for the Bromelia. So they actually would take about thirty days, sometimes up to two months, in it a like hundred years ago. On the water, so that's how the, that's how the Catalia accidentally was uh, introduced to the new war, and so in the initially when they unpack when we were using Catalia, they just strip it off. When they were actually collecting the Bromelia of the tree on uh, South America, they actually have the Catalia next to it, so they never know how to really care for all the emphasis is on the bromelia which like moisture and the carrier obviously is very wet as a packing material so by the time they get to England most of them die from rotting so but now going a hundred years later uh Peru the carrier especially now the show season is about us and there's almost every show, uh, especially if, if you're in Florida, there's, there's a several show on the same weekend. You have to really pick and choose which one to go. But the Bear Root Catalia is actually one way to get the new stuff because sometimes if you're lucky enough, you have overseas vendor from South America, Asia, or Japan, anywhere. But Catalia is actually a very good subject for Bear Rooted. Uh, I would not do Bear Rooted Catalia uh, bare rooted phalaenopsis or bare rooted uh, lady slipper over uh, for for that because the root system is totally different and you know, buying the bare rooted pathopadium you are taking 50 50 percent might lose the plant so but if you never do care a bare rooted orchid before do the catalia okay now uh, there's so they but they also you can also obtain the bare rooted from American in the nursery here, uh, we process differently. For example, in my nursery, when I do uh, bare root carrier, that for example, when we sell online, we only divide them uh, when we get order. For example, that the lady insect. Okay, so we divide them and fresh. Okay, and since it's inside United States, we do not have to go through that the export imported uh, at the show had to go to USDA because our nursery here is certified nursery by the state of California and then we got inspect twice a year for any any pest or disease and any issue okay now most of the, the orchid I'm a cat perfect three example here my nursery also import uh, Calaria because I want to get a new variety from Japan uh, from South America and also from Taiwan, for example. And then Thailand also doing a very good job on the, the Catalia breeding. Now, for that country, for anybody overseas, they had to process and they, the product had to pass USDA inspection. So what USDA do is they want to guard to make sure we don't import any foreign pests and disease. So, the, imp the exporter, the first thing they do is, they, in addition to, they, they want to make sure they trim off. So most of the bare rooted one you see, you do not going to see a lot of root like we, when we do here in the United States. They, they have to make sure they trim off any of the older leaf or the root, okay? And the second, and the second thing is, they have to, they will usually spray a lot of fun uh, fungicide and pesticide to make sure there's no uh, registered insect. And this is why uh, it's very important that I'm, I feel to educate this, this uh, segment here. Uh, there's, I usually, when I do at my nursery, I should have to wash my hand. When I do my own nursery, uh, I, do, like, I do 
uh, Beirut before, and like when I like for example when I import from Taiwan, but I do not like to sell the Beirut from overseas right the way. What I mean is fresh off the box. Uh, but unfortunately, this is usually the case, not the case when you buy orchid at the show because a lot of vendors from overseas, they just open the box, they pass the USDA, they sell to you right away. But there is, I'm gonna teach you today is how to handle it. Now, okay, so having said that earlier, okay, the, the first mistake people do, and this is how this make a difference, to be successful handle the, the Beirut at show or freshly imported, I only, for example, this is the uh, imported uh, Beirut. Jeff, you see here? It was imported back in December 12th. Okay. And then I'm actually going to release some Beirut uh, tomorrow because in the process, I make sure nothing, if anything rotted, out. So I'm not passing that to the customer. Okay, so when you buy orchid at the show and they are bare rooted and they're just from overseas, make sure you look your plant carefully. And especially if you look at the bottom of here or the rhizome, if you can see it. Sometimes they put uh, moss and covers it. Uh, that's a bad mistake. I, I don't like that. Uh, because the rhizome, if anything will be the bacterial rotting, will be at the rhizome area. So this is why this is this is a beautiful variety, a new Japanese variety. Uh, we imported back in from December 12th, and I do I only want to release it tomorrow. It's almost like three week, yeah. But in three week, I make sure there is no if anything that is a problem, they toss out. So. And that's what should, uh, a responsible nurseryman should do, okay? But in the whole process, Jeff, this is a perfect example. You see here? I'm also preconditioned. I'm also preconditioned the plant. Because in the whole process, every week, I just mix them. We make a dry. And you notice that? It got a new shoe coming up. And a new shoe coming up. Okay, all right. So let's say you, you got orchid from the show. Okay, and do not be careful when you handle the plant because like I say, this plant has been sprayed, especially if you have orchid, uh, the vendor is from Thailand. Okay, Thailand as a country, not to put it on Thailand because it's so hot over there. Uh, 10 years ago, I got to read the data. Thailand as a country used more pesticide in a year than the whole U, uh, uh, UN, the, the, uh, US. Uh, the European nation. EU. EU, yeah. So because they are really hot and dry and humid. So uh, they, every country processed differently, but I know for, for, for Thailand, they had to spray a lot of uh, fungicide too okay so to make sure you wear your glove when you handle it so and then like i say if you get it from the show that like next week i'm going to the Miami show okay i sometimes i buy the orchid from another vendor okay they say like the first thing when i get home is leaving it alone just like what i did here i leave it alone for two weeks but if you're at home if you have a greenhouse one week minimum one week and then uh because and, and the process uh you want to let the all the pesticide and uh fungicide reduce to wear out and for instantly one of the when i go to usda in, uh, in uh training uh, it station to pick an orchid that's one thing the usda inspector when they open up the, they always the glove is required because sometimes they just load it with fungicide and sometimes they we even wear masks because when you open the boxes, just the, the sometimes the old thing just comes at you. And then, uh, and so this is something that if you have a very sensitive skin, okay, make sure you wear the glove and also the mask if required and, and wear the glove because uh, the, uh, anything that uh, most people cover everything, 
But don't forget about the eye. The eye is also a, a port of entry. Okay, so leaving along for what about uh, five to seven days, and the process uh, for myself, like this here, this is my Mega Thrive solution. Uh, if you didn't have Mega Thrive yet, get Mega Thrive, and I use it at the ratio just like you would swear Mega Thrive. This is three ounce per gallon, and Eric found this cute square, and I can I can you I, I, I can adjust this. So when I'm laying around, I just mix them. Make a try. And make sure you especially hit the root area. I have a lot of pain. This is one variety. Okay. If you only have one or two, just soak the plant. Make a try is is not is you can is is you can if you don't have a grout with it, don't worry about it. It's, it's, they use it on the on the corn. They actually develop for corn and soybean. Okay, voila. So, and just leave it alone and let it dry. And then later on, uh, depending on your condition, some of you are in Florida, some of you in, have greenhouse or under light. Uh, well, for those of you who under light, your environment might be drier. So, if it might be a good idea to put your orchid in a little bag. Don't seal it, just a little bag. And the mega thread earlier, the moisture will retain. You, know, you don't have to seal them up. And down here will be a, a incubating, an instant in incubation room for your orchid. Okay, so now another mistake people do is when you do the bare root catalyst is over pot. Okay, so this is my own experience. I like to do the moss versus the bark. And there's a reason for it. Uh, the fresh bark, especially whether it's Douglas fir bark mix or the kiwi bark, especially kiwi bark is really, really hard to wet. So uh, in the process, it's always start easier because of when, the, when they are uh, conditioned for, for import to USA, they, they let the print really dry, so print are really stressed. So it's, and there's no, and they also trim out a lot of root. So you, you want to also do a smaller pot. Remember, I always say less is more. So always start with a smaller pot versus the big pot. Uh, this is actually will be perfect. This is the skinny eye that I'm going to offer them tomorrow for the uh, show and tell. This is the skinny eye Debbie. Okay, Debbie is a wonderful uh, alba form. But they call it semi alba because uh, in because they do have a little bit black inside the column, so they, they call it semi alba. But still, up from the outside, it still looks like white. Uh, skinny eye alba is a very compact, just like the NSEP alba or compactum. All right. So this is the division. So this is actually do not, and this is only three inch pop. So do not pop up more than three inch pop because this, you only have some this much of root here. If you pile up in the six inch pot, the chances of allotting the plant is very, very great. So always start with small and get them to root it first. Okay, get it established first. And then once they get going in here, the reason that the moss is because the plant itself is so dry already and there's not much root here. So our number one is to get a uh, uh, rooting formation on them and moss by some of my previous uh, podcasts, you always pre-moist the moss. In fact, sometimes I even uh, pre-soak the moss, whether in five cent, and the sun, after the five cent soak, I wash it, I squeeze them up, let them dry up, and then uh, sometimes I, I can, for the bare rooted, I will put in the second soaking again in the mega dry solution. Then I wet it, squeeze it up, and then the moss here already had the, uh, the uh, mega thrive enzyme in there. Okay, so once you mask them, because these are, so they, you squeeze, make sure you squeeze out all the moss so there's no, more, there's no water retention in there. So the moss is pretty moist. Okay, then after that, just make sure you separate away from all your growing area. 
and forget about it. Just let them do their thing. Your biggest mistake is to water them right away. So once the moss gradually drying out, when they become dry in the process. So right now the pre-moist moss, we're gonna ha help the root uh, regeneration also, and also the, the give some moisture to the bare root area. And as the plant, the moss are drying, and they will dry. Uh, and the, the root sense, the root will sense the desire to search for water, and that's when they put a new root. So technically, uh, if you can, if you have a clear pot, put in a clear pot. Uh, that way, sometimes, the only then when you water it, next time, when do you need to water them? Is when you see the new root form, either from the top or from the side. And that's when you can water them, okay? So that's the very critical, is first, not to over water. And if you, yeah, if you insist you still want to do bark, that's okay, because sometimes you live in a very more uh, moisture environment in Florida, uh, that's okay. Uh, you, you can also put it in your basket, uh, but if you want to do bark, make sure you can, uh, Linda Lee or Mary do a good mix, you can add some of the peat uh, 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 orchid spider moss, like New Zealand or cherry moss. Chunk, uh, break it up and then mix it up with your orchid bark mix. So that will retain some moisture because some area like Virginia, uh, Linda is in Virginia, it's very moisture in, in the summertime. W and I actually prefer to import most of my Beirut in the winter time. Why? Because it's a short day, long night. So it's not as stressful on the orchid, on the calorie, as let's say in the summertime. For example, uh, I do rating show. And the chain, I, I and I, I will have friends from Redland. The chances are when you buy the orchid in the summertime of rotting it, is then more dangerous than in right now. And right, especially right now, a lot of calorie species or hybrid, when it's short day and long night, the print, the physiology is resting. So it's actually less stressful on the orchid as a bare rooted. So that's another good season. Uh, so the, the technically we only, uh, uh, the, we only do a lot of bare root. And we, be in a greenhouse, we repot orchid 24, uh, eight, uh, 12 months of the year, uh, depend on the, uh, the variety. Uh, but at home, the general rule is, uh, if you at home, always wait until if a new shoot coming up, but the bare root orchid are a little bit different because you know the show season. Uh, most there's no show in the, in the after April, for example. You know, uh, with the exception of the redland, but it's really hot. And uh, I think this is about the key point. Uh, always and, and also, again, a show always buy from you hear good the vendor that is is, is well known, established they're going to back up with the product. Uh, I would really uh, uh, re have reservation by anything Catalina bare rooted or rooted uh, from eBay. For example, we have a customer uh, messenger me. He bought three Catalina from a, 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 man, a vendor. You know, there's no, you know, first of all, you don't know who they are. You don't even know the address. Online. My, online. But myself, we, we make our present in on eBay now because we want to set an example how what the right way to do business, you know. Uh, we back up our product and every label always have a proper label on that. Not the handwritten label, not the label writing on a piece of paper. <laughs> uh, that will be disappeared in five months. You probably forget where the orchid coming from. But he bought three orchid from this vendor and all he, all he know is from North Carolina, okay. Two other three rotted it, so he replaced it. That's fine. <laughs> the funny thing about the third one that did not did die. It was supposed to be a, a, a nice orange one from Thailand variety. Guess what? He's a very good grower. You know, he's my customer. He been following this podcast every time. He flowered them six months afterward. Guess what? It's not orange calorie. It was a, it was a pink. Okay. 
So luckily he know where he come from. So this is why is a lot of time you know I I I kind of always say you know you if you got what you pay for, but if you can find a good local vendor or somebody in the United States, uh, I know all in all I know this podcast go to all over the world now. I have customer in I have a people stop me when I was in Penang. Hey, I watch your channel. <laughs> okay, so but always support, always buy from established. Sometimes the sometimes the re, uh, review on eBay doesn't work because those are the people who re review only. Oh yeah, when I receive it, yeah, it was green, it was on time. That's it. Whether the plan is going to be true to type, it's different story. Okay, so uh, always make sure uh, common sense. Okay. Buying Beirut online, uh, buy, buy Beirut at the orchid show can be fun because it can it's more economical versus the the nursery had to go up for another year or two years, take the time to establish and so on. So if you're not a, if you're not a experienced grower, if you're just a beginner, uh, Be Beirut is not the one for you. Seriously, uh, leave it to make sure you. It's, uh, Learn how to grow the catalia in the established part first, okay. But the bare rooted catalia is more for the uh, more experienced grower uh, that I want to venture for the new variety. But always like you're a good housewife or a consumer, always check out the leaf, okay. Uh, not just the top, but the important part is the rhizome on catalia. If anything will happen, who should usually the bacterial rotting will be on the rhizome, and they should they will usually be black. Any sign of black darkness, they go really fast, and then you don't want to come to your orchid collection. Okay. Then again, common sense, and uh, while well, they are powdered up, they're not you're not watering them. Just leave them alone. But when you are actually feeding the uh, your orchid nutrient, the normal orchid, for example, you can actually put a dilute solution, but just miss the leaf. Why? Because like no, any good fertilizer, especially normal optimum nutrient, it can absorb the leaf. It can absorb. It was so refined. They can actually absorb through the leaf. So the think about this: when the plant is so stressed, being bare rooted and shipped overseas, the whole process might take at least a week before they come to the show. They are hungry, they're thirsty. So this fertilizer is what we call foliar feeding. You're not gonna wet the pollen media. It only help it. This way, it serves two purpose. Moisturizer on the skin, okay? And give them the needed nutrient that they can pick up. And this is actually going to speed up the recovery of the or the carrier and the put a new shoot and the root on them. Okay, so this is a segment on the bare root carrier. And so I hope everybody enjoyed today's segment. And I will see you uh, soon. If you are new to this uh, this subscription, uh, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We will be uh, I will be traveling to Tamiami show next week. Uh, so I will not able to do as many tapping as before. So I, uh, if you're not su su subscribe the YouTube channel, uh, you might not know when do I post a new one. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, okay? And then uh, share the, the channel with all your friends. Uh, uh, there's over, once you subscribe, there's over 135 uh, episodes now. So once you are sus subscribed, there's a, in the in the uh, uh, channel, you, there's a type in keyword um, Catalia. It will pull out any episode on Catalia, uh, how to do repotting orchid or repotting Catalia. It will bring it up because it's hard to find or go through 135 episodes. Okay, thank you very much and happy New Year and happy orchid growing. Bye bye.